Hello guys, today we'll have an example of refactoring of the Laravel code of Junior Developer, which I will transform into a bit better code. And it's kind of like experiment video. So backstory, locally in my country Lithuania, I started some kind of a mentorship program for Junior Laravel developers. And part of that mentorship program is taking a look at their code and making it better, provide any advice or help them make that code better. You can call it code review in short. So in this video, I will make a code review of one of my students. I won't name him, it's just someone's code. And let's make it better. Disclaimer, I'm not here to scrutinize the code, to blame someone for something. That's the learning process. The code is not bad. It's working, so it does the job for the client. So pro tip for you juniors, don't be afraid to show your code. And pro tip for seniors, don't attack the juniors that the code is bad. We all started somewhere. And disclaimer number two, my advice is just my personal advice how I would change that code. It's not necessarily the holy grail or the only way. That's the beauty of coding and of Laravel in particular, that there are multiple ways how to do the same thing. So let's go. What is the project? It's a very small kind of admin panel for managing materials. So a simple crowd of materials and you want to create a new, you get a model window and then you save the data. Now let's take a look at the code. And I will give around 10 tips or so, so this video may be longer than usual on this channel, but I think it will be really useful and very practical. So let's start with routes. And there are a few so-called CRUDs, so managing of production orders, managing of material orders and materials themselves. And first thing I would do here in this file is introduce route groups. So if we take a look at this URL and similar ones, names are pretty similar and middleware is actually the same. So that's the first thing. So we can do route group parameters of that group. So middleware equals rollmeister and then callback function of all of those routes. Now those routes become part of that group, cut paste, and then we don't need the middlewares here. So that's already shorter. Each line is shorter. Let's delete all of them. Probably there is a quicker way to do that in PHP Storm. Okay, so that's a bit better. Next, you can see the prefix of the URL is the same. So we can also take it out into a group parameter. So prefix equals production orders like this. And then we can remove it like this. So that's shorter. And probably we can transform that get and post into a route resource. So it's hard to guarantee 100% upfront, but I do feel that there's index, there's delete, update form and update post, and then create post. And in route resource, there are typical seven verbs. Here's Laravel documentation for it. So that's the standard of the URLs for all those actions with route names. So I guess instead of all of that, we could do something like route resource, production orders, production order controller class, production order controller class, something like this. Currently, as the code is written, it wouldn't work because the naming of the methods and their behavior is different. And I'll probably shoot a separate video of how to transform that. But for now, let's comment it out. This is just a suggestion to transform five rows into one row with a more typical standard well known structure. And even if you don't want to transform those into route resource, those verbs are pretty important actually. So for example, URL delete should not be a get resource. It should be route delete. Similar for update, there should be route put. It's kind of a standard. That code would still work, but if you want that code to be taken over by someone else, so if you work in a team, it's better to stick to standards. Next, let's talk about middleware. So I see middleware role master for all of that group. And in another group, material orders, there's role admin. And of course, we should introduce route group here. But let's take a look at middlewares, role admin and role meister. I understand there are roles here, so role admin. And there's also role manager, middleware. So like this and role meister. Okay, so I see all of those middlewares are really similar. Checking the roles from user, which is fine. But I think it's too much code in here. Let's try to shorten it. So let's take role meister, for example, if auth check this sentence, I would move into route groups. So in routes web, what I would do, I guess all of those routes are accessible only for logged in users, except for login form, right? So route group 
middleware auth, then callback function, and then inside of that, cut and paste everything else. So now all of those are protected by auth, and then inside of the middleware, you don't need to check that at all. You just assume that it's already a logged in user. So already shorter. Then user find auth ID, you don't need to do that because it's already in your auth user. So auth user like this will contain all the object, full object of logged in user, including the variables, the fields. So we delete that line and do something like this. And it's already shorter. Let's click reformat code in PHP Storm. And it's a bit prettier. Probably this line is not needed also. Also, this line could be shortened. You see the same variable being checked. So what if we do if in array, roll ID and array would be three or one. Roll three or one, like this. Delete the other part and another bracket. And probably one and three would be better. So even shorter. And then general thing about middleware, probably return next request. If you look at the documentation examples and other examples, it should come as a default return. And any condition that stops this from happening should be higher. So it's better to switch the condition. So if it's not role ID of what we need, then we'll return redirect back. It's a bit more readable and more standard like Laravel middleware. And finally, I would argue it's a personal opinion. I wouldn't redirect the user back. I would just show the page not authorized, which is abort 403. No, don't need to return like this. So compare that to the original middleware role manager. And this is our final middleware. I think it's more readable. And also we have three middlewares now, but in fact, they are so similar. The only difference is what roles to check and we can transform that into one middleware. Let's do PHP artisan, make middleware, make middleware, check role, for example, right? And let's copy that from role meister here into check role like this. And then this will be a parameter. So we can add a parameter here, for example, string role, then, for example, we have rows as an array of what roles should be checked for which name. For example, admin should be role one, meister should be one and three, and manager should be one and two, for more to remember. Yeah, something like that. And then we have roles here. And then if we register that middleware in the kernel file, in the app HTTP kernel. For example, let's register it as check role, then check role class. And then in here in the routes web, we can do check role meister like this. And for this group, it will be a middleware of check role admin. For here, it will be role master, role manager, and stuff like that. But instead of three files, now we have check role. Oh, wait, I've left one more thing. So it should be roles role, like this. Probably we need to check that roles role exists in this array. But if you are calling the middleware only from your code, probably it's relatively safe. Or we can do something like role IDs equals roles role. Or if it doesn't exist, for example, this, and then have role IDs here. Okay, enough of the middlewares. Now let's take a look at migrations. And I've noticed one thing which is pretty common to junior developers is not creating foreign keys. So users role ID is a field in users table, which is just integer. So it's one, two, or three. And then roles table actually exists. It was created as the last migration but there's no foreign key in the database level from users to roles. And I assume it's because it was hard to refactor. So if you have already the field, how do you change that when the table is created later? So one way to do that is create a separate migration file. So for example, PHP artisan, make migration, add role ID to users table. And current role ID is camel case. So in users, we have role ID. A standard way to use foreign keys is underscore ID. So we have the old field 
and we will create a new one. So role ID here, we will do table, foreign ID. It's a syntax that started with Laravel 7, role ID constraint, which means it will create a foreign key on a database level and will ensure that if some role is deleted, then if there is at least one user with that role, the delete operation will be restricted and fail. So foreign keys on a database level will allow you to protect the data from accidentally deleting or updating something. And now let's take a look at the controller code and make it better. So in the routes web, I've chosen a controller of material controller class. And what do we see here? We have construct with middleware of role master, and this is not needed here anymore. If you have the middleware in the web routes, then you don't need to have middleware in the controller. Next, what do we have? Index, which is probably list of materials, and then material list, which is also list of materials. And visually, when I look at all those conditions and code, the only difference I see is just different view. So I would probably transform that into one method index with additional parameter of something like view equals one by default or something. But let's not do that inside of this video. It would take too long. Let's focus on transforming this one into a better code. So what advice can I give here? First, a small detail, but pretty important. If you have a list of something, please call it as a plural variable. So material types like this. Model name should be singular, but material types variable should be plural. And it actually is plural when passing to the view, but then we should try to be consistent in all the variable names. Now also I see that the view part, this line is identical in if else statements. So in order not to repeat that line, we show them afterwards. So we return that view anyway. The only difference is what materials do we pass here. Okay, so that's better. Now, if there's no filter, there's material all, but if there is a filter, we filter them, right? So two things here. First thing, this query is really, really inefficient. So you should not make filters after you take all the data. Imagine if your table has like tens of thousands of rows, so you get all of them first, which downloads huge amount of data, and then you filter them. Instead of that, you should filter them on MySQL level and take exactly what we need. So where should be before all, and all becomes get. So all the condition and filtering should happen before taking the data. So that's one. And also there are a few ways how we can get rid of that if else. And I will show you two ways. So first we can use ternary operator and do materials equals. If that condition like this, then we do material all. Let's do it in a new line. Otherwise we do this condition. So like this, and then we comment this out. A bit shorter and maybe more readable, but that's a personal preference. Maybe if else is more readable for some of you. But also there's eloquent when method that allows you to run everything in one query. So materials equals material when some condition and then get. That condition is if material type is zero, then we do callback function on query like this, and then we add query where type. Query where type, we don't need get here, and we need to pass use material type filter like this, probably space here. Let's close the sidebar. So this is probably the shortest way or the most Laravel way how I would run the same condition statement. Now, if we scroll down through controller, I have a general advice or tip, work on your code style. So a lot of inconsistencies. So single quotes or double quotes, space or no space. So space between methods or not. So for example, if I click reformat code in my PHP storm, let's see what it changed. So formatted 21 lines. It's quite a lot for a small controller. So I can see that this developer should use something like code style PSR 12 or just use PHP storm code format feature. And not everything could be corrected by PHP storm. So things like quotes should be done manually. Let's scroll down and see what happens next. So this is a method where material is created. Let's focus on that one for a few minutes. First, according to Laravel route resource standard, it should be probably called store and not create because create is for the form. But as I mentioned previously, we won't refactor it 
this time, but we will make this one a bit better. So this one is validation. And here we're checking whether the name, code, amount, or type is null or empty, in fact. For that, instead of this, it should be request validate and then array of rules for the fields. So name is required. The rule is required. And there are a lot of rules available in Laravel. And if we duplicate that line, we just do code required, amount required, and type required. And if that validation fails, it would redirect back. So it does the same thing. And also it would redirect back with exact error messages. And this statement doesn't return any messages. So user wouldn't even know what happened. So that's the validation Laravel way. Or you can create a separate class, which is form request. So PHP artisan make request create material request, for example. And you can replace that request with create material request. So variable stays the same, but the class name is different. And in that request, we should cut and paste. Inside of that request, we should change authorized to true by default. And then this is the array of rules. So we paste this here, and then we don't need to validate anything in the controller. So we put all the validation into request class and makes the controller shorter. Now to create a new material, this is a valid way to do that, but a shorter way would be material create. And then you pass all the array. So instead of doing request name, code, amount, and type assigning manually, you can do request all, or even more secure way is request validated if you use form request classes. So that contains all the array of the request, and then you don't need to do all of these. The only condition to that is that all those fields should be fillable in the model. So you need to define fillable as array, name, code, type and amount from what I remember, something like this. So four fields, right? So they should be fillable and then you can create them like this by passing the array. And finally, return or redirect back is a personal opinion. I wouldn't redirect back because you are not sure where that is coming from. Maybe in the future, some developer will change that condition. So you should redirect to specific route, for example, route of material order something, material index, whatever, with success message. So variable message equals success or something. And then in the blade file of that route, you would be able to use something like session message and show that message. So that was just for demo purposes. I will undo all of that now. Okay, so here we shortened the controller method to create the material. And final advice is about update form. So there is update method and also there's update view. And for all of that, I advise to use route model binding, which is part of route resource as well. And it seems that developer tried to do that. So you pass the model here. But for that to work, you need to structure the routes in a good way. So use route resource here, probably, or pass the variable here as let's see, update ID. So material, it should be material. So this name should be the same as this variable name. That's why it didn't work. So it could be something like you don't need ID and you don't need this and material is resolved automatically by route model binding. I'm not entirely sure that this change would work 100%. I haven't tested it, but it's the direction you should go if you want to use route model binding and again, shorten your controllers. And you can do the same thing here. In instead of ID, you have material, material, and then you don't need find or fail here. So then in routes web, you should have material on both actually here and here like this. So that's it, a short review, but actually took quite a long time. And I hope that review helps that person, the author of the code. Also, those of you who are junior or in the beginning of your Laravel journey, you got some tips and tricks on how to structure your code better. And I think I will do more of these code reviews on this channel because I see that people kind of like that. So I will have more material for this one from my students in my mentorship program. So expect something like that more on this channel. And if you want to support my efforts financially and kind of thank me for that, you can check out one of three products that I have online, which is Laravel Admin Panel Generator, quickadminpanel.com, one of my 14 courses at laraveldaily.teachable.com, or my latest release is LiveWire Components at livewirekit.com. See you guys in other videos.